Why does this remind me of the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Hey, Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dice for Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be making a Granny Square cardigan. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to be making a granny square cardigan. I will let you know that I have been working on this project for a little over a month because I needed to make almost 50 granny squares. And for me personally, it takes about under 20 minutes, but still like on the, the high side, like 20 minutes to just make one granny square it has been a project that I've been working on for literally like over a month. The granny squares that I will be making are these ones here. I think they're just super cute. I really wanted to make a fall theme. A while back, I ended up making a granny square bag. Super cute. I'm basically doing the exact same method for my new granny squares that I did for these granny squares. So the only difference between this granny square pattern and this one is that this had 12 petals and this one has 16 petals. There's definitely a size difference. Again, the only difference is that I added four extra petals. And then as you can see, it is very square because you want a granny square. And that is because I built myself one of these doohickeys out of a random piece of wood and some nails I found in the garage. The reason why you want to have yourself one of these is because your project most most likely is going to take a while to do and while you are working on your granny squares if you put them on a little doodad like this again just a piece of wood and some nails they will keep their square shape and not like roll I don't know if you can buy these you can't buy this one this one you know. so I just want to go over the colors that I am using for this or that I used for this they are all impeccable and you can buy this at Michaels I don't know where else they would sell it I don't know if this is the Michaels brand or what the middle it's brown it's called chocolate First row of petals, the yellow. This is called Sunny Day. Orange layer. This one, I made sure I kept kept these. It's called pumpkin. So that's like the pumpkin orange. And then the outer layer is just called black. These are the colors. These are like, I think, $4 each. And I usually use a 30% coupon on some of them. And then sometimes they do have discounts. This yarn is not very expensive. When I am done with my project, I'll let you know how many balls of yarn I have used for each one. I'm also gonna put it in the description below if you are curious to know if you also wanna make it, how much money you're gonna be investing in this. The one thing about this project is it's not gonna be expensive, but it is gonna be time consuming. Again, I am going to be using my favorite crochet hook and that is the five millimeter, also known for you. Americans is H8. I think that's pretty much it for me explaining what I'm doing because I really just have to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to show you how I'm making my granny square, how I'm attaching all the granny squares together to make the shape, how many granny squares you're going to need. I think it's 48. We will see when I put it together. And I'm also going to be showing you how to make like the little cuffs and the border around it. So let's just get right into me showing you how to make the granny square. For this project, you'll need a crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and the four colors you wanna to use to make your granny squares. I'm gonna start off with the center part of my square by making a slip knot. Then I'm going to chain five. I'm going to insert my hook back into the very first stitch, loop over, pull through both, and now I have to chain three. One, two, three. What I need to do is because I want 16 petals, I'm gonna need to make 16 double crochets, but this is gonna count as one, so I just need to make 15 double crochets. So to make a double crochet, you're going to yarn over, insert into the middle of this little circle that you have made, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now I'm gonna make a second one. So that's yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So right now I have three chains. So I have one, two, three, and I need to make a total of 16. Now that I am done, I'm going to count backwards to make sure that I have 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So into this very first stitch here, I'm going to insert my hook. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull through all three and this will create a slip stitch. And then I'm going to cut my tail, yarn over, 
pull through, pull tightly. All right, and now we have the center done. So now I can start on the first row of petals. For this one, I am gonna be using the yellow. Again, I'm going to make a slip knot, insert my hook, pull tight. Right before I made that little knot, like right before this one, I'm going to insert my hook, I'm going to yarn over, and I'm gonna pull through this stitch, as well as this little loop that I had just made. And then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. So this is the start of my first petal. Then I'm going to yarn over, insert back into this stitch, Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So now I have two stitches. I'm gonna do this one more time. Yarn over, insert. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So this is gonna make the first petal. Now this petal is going to be different than the rest of them because I did do that little chain. Now I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. I'm going to chain one before I start my next petal. Then I'm going to go into the next stitch. I'm gonna yarn over, Insert into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now I have four stitches, whereas this one I had three because I had made that chain of three. Now I'm just going to yarn over, oh my goodness, these tails, I swear, yarn over, pull through all four and then yarn over. So what I'm doing as well, as you can see, is that the little tail ends, instead of just leaving them dangling in the back, what I'm doing is I'm trying to hide them within the petals. So now I have to do this 16 times. All right, and now that I'm on the last one and I did my little chain, I'm just gonna go over here and insert it into one of these chains. Cut that, loop over, pull through, then pull tightly. Now on to the next petal. The steps for the orange third row slash second row of petals is gonna be the exact same as what I just taught you with the yellow, except for when I added a stitch in between each petal, I'm gonna be adding two stitches. Take my crochet hook and I'm gonna insert it in between the petals. So right here, I'm gonna yarn over my orange and I'm gonna pull through the yellow and the little loop that I just made. And I'm gonna chain three. And then I'm gonna do the same steps to make my petal. That's yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And again, because I made those three stitches, I'm just going to be doing three little loops. Then I'm gonna yarn over, pull through all three. And now I'm going to chain two. Then I'm gonna yarn over, and again, go through the next gap between petals, and I'm also taking the tails and making sure that I'm hiding them. The only difference between the yellow petals and the orange petals is that I am chaining two in between each petal instead of just chaining one. And I'm gonna go around until I have 16 orange petals. And again, I chained my two, and now I'm just going to insert my hook, loop over, pull through, cut the working yarn, yarn over, pull through, and tight. And that is the center, and now it's time to work on the border. For the border, I'm gonna be using black, and again, I'm going to be doing my slip knot. Insert my hook. I always start where I finish. I'm going to insert my hook, loop over, and then again, pull through the orange and pull through the little knot that I had just made, and I'm gonna chain four. One, two, three. This is gonna start the border. So what's gonna happen is eventually I'm gonna have six double crochets in this space here. And then in this one, I'm going to be doing three double halves, three double halves, three double halves, and then this is going to be a corner. Let's start off with this corner. I'm only gonna do half the corner now and then half the corner when I finish the border. I'm gonna yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, Insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So this is technically three double crochets. The little chain of four that I made right here counts as one of those three. Now I'm going to move on to the half doubles. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert. Again, it's always in between the petals. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. So that's one. 
That's two. That's three. That's one. This here is going to create a flat part of the border. This is the flat edge. Now that I've gotten three, I can work on the next corner. So in this corner here, I'm going to do three double crochets, chain three, and then do three more double crochets. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. I'm gonna do this two more times. I'm going to chain three. Now I'm going to chain three double crochets in that same spot. So this is what the corner is looking like. So I'm going to be doing another flat, then a corner, then flat, then a corner, and then flat, and then returning back to the first corner that I started off to finish it off. Now that I finish this side of the border, I'm gonna finish what I started. I'm going to be doing three double crochets right in that corner there. So that's yarn over, insert yarn over, pull through. That's one. And then I'm gonna chain three and then I'm going to insert it over here, yarn over, pull through everything, cut that, yarn over, pull through, and tight. Next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, what I made, and I'm gonna stretch it over it, but I just wanna quickly show you the difference. So this is the one that we had just made. See how it's still kind of round? This is what it looks like when you put it in a granny square holder. The edges are less round. It has more of a square shape. And in each corner, I just put it over the nail and I just stretch it out. Now I have to make two half squares. So again, I'm gonna start off with my slip knot, insert my hook, and I'm gonna chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Then I'm gonna insert my hook back into the first chain, loop over, pull through all the loops. I'm gonna chain three. One, two, and three. Now instead of me making 16, I'm only going to be making eight because this is a half a square. Because this is going to be a half, I don't need to attach this end to this end. I'm gonna cut my working yarn, yarn over, Yarn over, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And pull through and pull tightly. Now I have to make eight petals. Making the petals on the half square is the exact same steps that you would make the petals on a full square. And now I have to make eight orange petals. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert my hook in between that, yarn over, pull through everything, chain three, and then just start working on my petals like I did for the yellow. What's gonna be different for the border is that there's gonna be a corner, a corner, and a corner. And the two corners on the side are gonna be halves, and then this is gonna be a full quarter. So like a full 90 degrees there. All right, I've made 48. I've made 48 squares. They are done. I don't know if I'm gonna need any more than 48. Hopefully 48 will do. If not, I'll just have to make more squares. I hope not. I made this contraption because the other one could not hold 48 squares. Why does this remind me of the Leaning Tower of Pisa? I used some dowel rods from the Dollarama, a scrap piece of wood, a Dremel and some glue to hold those dowels down, and a Nest tea box to make sure that they all stay flat because these were kind of like warping and anywho i just need to put this together now and i've been looking forward to putting this sweater together since i started making it over a month ago time to put these lovely squares together and try to make a card again
Now to join them together, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do them in batches. So I'm gonna do all of the back together, the arms, and then the front pieces, and then attach them all together. To attach it, I'm gonna take the good side to good side, flip it over. Then I'm gonna take the color of my choice, which is gonna be the same color as the border. I'm gonna go into the corner here, loop over, pull through, and that's it. And then I'm gonna go into the next two, just the ones that like line up, yarn over, pull through, insert, yarn over, pull through. And I'm just doing this all the way until I get to the end of these two squares. So this is just a slip stitch. And that's what it looks like stitched up. And then to join two more squares, I want good side, good side, flip over, just kind of put them right up there. And then again, just lining up stitches and connecting them. So that's kind of what it's looking like, all right? And then I'm just gonna continue this until they're all connected. Now that the different pieces are all connected, I have to connect them all together by putting them good side to good side. This is the layout that I'm gonna connect all the parts together kind of made a diagram of how I stitched all my pieces together. I first stitched the front pieces to the back piece and then I stitched on the sleeves. Once all the pieces were connected, I stitched along the arm and the side to close up the cardigan. Okay, so this is what it's looking like right now. I think my biggest problem is that there's just so much gap in between here and my neck. What I wanted to do is I think I wanna add like the ribbing and I was just gonna do the bottom, but I think I'm gonna do like all around the entire thing. So then that way, this here is just like a little bit thicker and I think it will look a lot nicer. Also, I think when I first tried it on, I was wearing it wrong. I don't know how I did that, but um, so far I think it's looking really cute. I just need to uh, add the ribbing onto the cuffs and everything else and then I think I'm done. Now that everything is attached, it's time to work on the trim. First, make a slip knot and insert your hook into the bottom corner of your cardigan. Now you might be thinking, why am I working in the middle when I told you to work on the edge? Well, I already started working on the trim to see if I liked it. When I liked it, I obviously needed to film it step by step, but I wasn't gonna unravel what I just did, so I'm just demonstrating the steps in the middle of the cardigan. I'm going to chain five, and like all single crochets, I'm going to chain one extra at the top, I'm gonna skip that sixth chain and insert my hook into the fifth chain and make single crochets all the way down. To make a single crochet, you're going to insert your hook, loop over, pull through, loop over, pull through two. When you reach the bottom, you're going to slip stitch into the next black stitch and then you're gonna slip stitch into the one right after that. Skip those two slip stitches and insert into the third stitch AKA the first stitch of your row and make a single crochet. Only insert your hook into the back loop. Repeat this up to five stitches. Once you reach the top, chain one, flip the stitch and work your way back down. Keep repeating all these steps until you finished your trip. To attach the trim, I'm putting both sides together and I'm just going to be doing a simple slip stitch to attach them. The trim on the cuffs is the exact same method that I just showed you for the trim on the main cardigan. However, instead of doing five stitches, I'm going to be doing seven. 
The only difference between the cuffs and the trim is instead of slip stitching in the next two stitches, I'm going to be skipping a stitch, then making a slip stitch, skipping another stitch, and making another slip stitch before turning around and working my way back up my chain. One of the final steps is that I'm gonna be going through my cardigan and making sure that any loose threads are pushed in to the inside of the cardigan and they're not sticking out on the good side. Then I'm taking all those loose strings, tying them in knots where I can, and then cutting off the extra. And the cardigan's done. I want to say this has taken me an entire year to make and the reason why I say it's an entire year to make is because I wanted to make this project and even started making this project last summer in 2020 and then that went nowhere. This past August I'm like you know what I'm gonna do it again. I have a lot of spare time. Why not make something cool? So you saw it in action. You see how it looks. Now I want to give you the behind the scenes of uh, everything that went into making this sweater. First off how many balls of yarn did I use to make this sweater. So first up, I do wanna say that every single color on here, all four colors are by the brand Impeccable. I got them at Michael's. You get 260 meters. That would be 285 yards of yarn. And for each color, uh, let me try to figure this out because the problem is, is that I used some old color that I already had and then I went to buy new color. So I didn't like just go out and buy new yarn. I was using stuff that I kind of already had. Plus I ended up having to buy some yarn. Bear with me. I'll try to figure out how much yarn I used for everything. To be safe, two balls of yarn of each color. I think the brown, you might just need one. The orange, because I ended up doing the trim in orange as well, I think I only used two balls, think. Might have been three, I'm sorry. I should have been writing this down as I went along, but I recently thought of this. Good to buy more, or if you're willing to go back to this craft store or Michael's where I go to, buy as you go, because the impeccable brand is like their staple brand i want to say they always have it in stock and they always have an abundance of it in stock these colors are not going to go out anytime soon unless everybody wants to make this cardigan with the same colors that i'm doing then everyone buys it out highly doubt that's going to happen i think you're pretty good with two balls of each color but that being said if you do want your ribbing to be more than five like uh on my sleeves i did seven and on here i did five but say if you want this to be seven so it all depends on what color scheme you want to go with is gonna vary on how many balls of yarn you're gonna need. Another thing is I think what I would do in the future, which I would, I wanna make myself like a grayscale version of this. So it's like black, gray, and white. Instead of making half squares here, I think I'm gonna make it a full square. On the back, how there's like four, I think I might do five across. So that way the middle one would be right in between my neck and I'd have two over here. What ends up happening is that I did do three on the sleeve, but this part here of the front kind of goes into the sleeve so like my sleeve actually starts here is where i made it this part here is all part of the the front panel and then i guess it all depends on your size as well of how many squares you might need more squares you might need less squares it just all depends on how you want it to fit you how long did it take me to make this i think i started this back in early to mid august and i will say that i don't remember how long like probably like a month but like i was going at a slow pace i think i was making three squares a day and per square takes me about like 20 minutes to do but i gotten a lot quicker as i went on but i ended up watching the entire series of gravity falls 
the classic 1985 miniseries Anne of Green Gables. It was many, many hours. I watched the entirety of Over the Garden Wall and pretty much half the series of Parks and Rec. And then I also did watch Psych in between that too. So it's a lot of TV watching. The squares definitely take you the longest. If you have the time, definitely do it. Look how cute this is. This is the first one I've ever done. I know what I want to do next time and how I want to do it. Hopefully I helped you as much as I could. I really tried. When I was trying to actually look for how to attach the squares together, I couldn't really find anything. I would look at these tutorials on YouTube that had hundreds of thousands of views and none of them answered my questions. So that's kind of why I make videos sometimes and like nobody answered any of my questions for this. So I have to make a video to answer the questions. I definitely think that the border of this worked out quite well because this was just, I don't know why, but it felt like it was sitting too open and I like, you know, like it like this. Tried my best to show you what I could do. Anywho, if you're new to my channel and you like sewing, crafting, but mainly thrifting, why not subscribe? You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party. I think that is it. So y'all have a good day now.